Hello everyone, today I have another interesting problem to show you from the Harvard MIT Math Tournament 2023. Without further ado, let us take a look at what the problem statement is. So this problem is problem number 16 from the guts round. And here's the problem statement. The graph of the equation x plus y equals law of x squared plus y squared consists of several line segments. Compute the sum of their length. So if you'd like to take a moment to think about this problem, feel free to pause the video. If not, I'll be going through the solution right now. So when you see a problem like this, the first question you probably have in mind is, how does this graph even look? It looks like a complicated function that is quite uh, non-standard. There's like a flaw function and all that kind of stuff. And x and y are both uh, utilized in both sides of the equation. So to tackle uh, this problem, we first have to figure out how the graph looks. And to do this, we can simply break uh, up the graph into a few cases. So we see a flaw function. Likely, uh, the way to approach it is to consider what if uh, the value evaluates to 0, evaluates to 1, and so on. So first, let us draw the circle of radius 1. And all the points inside this circle will give the value uh, where the flaw of x squared plus y squared will evaluate to 0. Then in this case, the graph uh, of this equation will just be the points x plus y equals 0 and the points that lie inside this circle. So, as I mentioned, this circle contains points that are x law of x squared plus y squared equals 0. So, the part of the graph in the circle that we are interested in will have equation y equals to minus x, equivalently x plus y equals 0. So, this is the part of the graph that is inside the circle and then we can now continue this logic to evaluate the next few cases. So similarly, if we consider a circle of radius square root 2, then all the points lying inside this uh, ring over here will have flow of x squared plus y squared evaluate to 1. So then the points we are interested in all lie on the line x plus y equals 1, which is given by this line over here. It's quite easy to draw. It has slope minus 1 and intercept 1. So this is the line. It's important to be precise on where the intersections happen with respect to the different circles so that we can uh, accurately identify where are the endpoints, which is needed for our computation of the lengths. So in this case, remember, we only care about the points that lie inside this ring. So we only look at this part of the line segment, which is over here, as well as over here. So now let's, I think we get the hang of it. So let's take a look at the next circle. So the next circle is uh, this circle of radius square root 3 and all the points inside the ring here will have the flaw evaluate to 2. So again, we want to find out this line, but how do we draw this line uh, given that 2 is not yet on the axis? So let's put 2 on the axis. 2 will be somewhere here because this is square root 3. Then the question is, the line clearly starts outside the circle, but does it go inside the circle and does it go inside the inner circle before coming out. So there's a lot of questions here, which is why we need to check and do some computations. So how does the line look? It turns out that you can quick, you can quickly check that this line will be tangent to this inner circle because at the midway point, the distance to the origin turns out to be square root of two. So because this is a right, right angle triangle with hypotenuse, uh, length two and it's isosceles right angle. So the fit will be of length uh, square root 2. So just nice, this line is going to be tangent to uh, this inner gray circle here, which means the part of the line segment that we are interested in that lies in the ring is exactly from here to here. It is the entire part of the line segment because the line segment does not go inside the inner circle. So interesting, uh, a very interesting uh, part of the puzzle over here. But what's next? Do we have to continue adding more and more circles? Well, thankfully, not so, because if you look at the next uh, circle, which is this circle of radius 2, and everything in the ring is supposed to evaluate to a uh, floor of x squared plus y squared equals to 3, then the line we are interested in is now y equals to minus x plus 3. But if we draw this line, we can also again calculate that the closest distance to the origin uh, is going to be 3 over square root 2, which is larger than 2. So this means that the line segment will lie completely outside this circle and there's no part of the line segment that lies inside the ring. 
So this is all there is to the graph that we are interested in. And this is just the first part of the problem. Now we have to compute the sum of their lengths. So at this point, it is quite tempting to use um, coordinate geometry and just bash through and calculate all the endpoints and calculate the, the length of the line segments. But there's, there are actually much simpler approaches to find the length of this line segment using uh, more elementary geometry means. So let's take a look. Well, okay, firstly, before looking at the complicated ones, surely this uh, innermost line segment is obvious. It has uh, length one on each side because this is just the radius on each side. So let's take a look at the two harder uh, line segments to compute, starting with the outermost one. So this is the outermost line segment and we want to compute the length. So rather than finding the endpoints coordinates and then use like brute force uh, coordinate geometry, we can actually add a few lines to help us. So firstly, we can draw in the yellow lines as follow. So this is the feet of the perpendicular. And as we observe, uh, we have the line segment tangent to this uh, circle over here. This means that this yellow line is simply the radius of the square root 2 circle. So it's of length square root 2. And then this point here, it lies on the circle of radius square root 3. So this yellow line is one of the radius. And so it is of length square root 3. And then now we can simply use the fact that we have a right angle triangle here to calculate the length of half of the blue segment, which give 3 minus 2 uh, square rooted, which is 1. So 1 half of the blue line segment is of length 1. So now let us try and compute the length of this uh, line segment. So as before, we will add a few aiding lines. So we will add the feet of, uh, we add the perpendicular, and then as well as the line to the uh, intersection point here. So as before, what we can see is that this is the radius of the uh, square root 2 circle. So this is of length square root 2. And then this perpendicular is not hard to compute because uh, this length over here is 1. And we have a isosceles right triangle. So this part here is just 1 over square root 2. So now that we have this, we can compute the whole uh, half length over here. So half of the half of the whole line segment by Pythagoras is 2 minus half square rooted. So it's square root of 3 over 2. But we are interested only in this light blue part. So, uh, but we know that the gray part as before, we pointed out that is 1 over square root 2. So the blue part is just the square root of 3 half minus 1 over square root 2, which gives this expression over here, root 3 minus 1 over root 2. So there you have it. By putting together all the different lengths, we know that the all, the sum of all the line segments have lengths uh, 1 plus root 3 minus 1 over root 2 plus 1 and then times 2 for uh, doubling all the line segments. So this is the final answer which you can simplify as 4 plus square root 6 minus square root 2. So that is all to this problem. I hope you enjoyed this video and the problem as well. If you enjoy problems like this, do subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more math videos. See you soon.